at first when they started thinking about flies, they were like, oh, I don't want to work with flies. And then after Dr. Reed came out here and she started talking to them about it, they were very interested in it. In elementary school, students are always very enthusiastic about science and math. By the time they get to high school, those that think they're not going to do it have already made that decision, usually. So I thought middle school would be the right age to target to try to prevent the loss of um, students from class. So I work on research on flute flies, so it's a logical extension of my own um, scientific research. Part of the power of this is that the fruit flies um, are used to demonstrate every concept in biology, ranging from ecology, which is a very sort of large-scale, broad phenomena, to cell biology, which is a very, very small phenomena, or, or understanding how DNA works. And it's possible to understand all these phenomena um, with fruit flies. curriculum is supposed to um, complement what the students are getting in class anyhow. So there's um, required topics they have to co cover throughout the year and we designed the curriculum to try to complement as many of those themes as we could but all using fruit flies. One of the challenges that we, we discovered at Westlawn and is true here as well is that these students lack some basic resources um, for being able to do science and the, one of the biggest limitations are microscopes. Um, the microscopes they have are not necessarily functioning or um, are, there's not enough of them to go around. And so one of the major things I asked for in the seed funds was to get um, some small handheld microscopes that we could use for some of the lessons. The other primary thing I've used the seed funds for was um, paying for the field trip. So I wanted to make sure that everybody could go on the field trip without any um, financial limitations and so that money went towards the bus to get them there, um, paid for their lunch when they had lunch in the dining hall. Part of the reason I wanted to organize that is because despite Tuscaloosa Magnet being physically very close to the university campus, um, only a small portion of the students have actually spent significant time on campus and some have never even been to campus at all. So I wanted them to have the opportunity to see what it's like to go to college and what a, what a science environment is. Um, if they were to stay um, involved in, in, in STEM fields. To get to go in a real college lab and see what's going on, it was just amazing for them because they'd never been to anything like that. And I think that's great because I think it, it, it causes students to really be interested in science. Just today, the students all gave us, um, each of us, a set of thank you letters, um, so individually written for each of us, um, which was really nice. They're primarily thanking us for organizing the field trip that we had them go on in early March. I mean, I think it illustrates a really great way that we can take our research and our research topics and bring them to the public, and in this case, to younger children, so that they can see that not all researchers are basically the Albert Einstein stereotype of crazy white hair or white lab coat. With Dr. Reed being a woman, the students don't typically think of scientists as being females. They usually think of them as being males. So since she and all her assistants are females, that has been great for the students to get to see that scientists can be females too. And just to be able to have the opportunity to, to learn from her has been amazing. Throughout all of this, we've been um, collecting data for assessment, so trying to determine whether or not this is actually successful in um, helping uh, students, especially um, girls and minority students, feel like they are more likely to pursue science in the future.
Health Lab is a collaboration between community members and UA students and faculty. And our goal is to address the health needs out in Holt. And so the CCBP provided seed funds to help develop this partnership. With seed funds, we are planning on doing a needs assessment to address the, to figure out what are the largest health needs out in Holt. Holt is a small community in Tuscaloosa County. It's very close to the university. A lot of people don't even know that Holt is there. And it, it's, a, it's an underserved community. Uh, it's unincorporated, so that means it's not part of the city. It doesn't have its own city infrastructure. It doesn't have its own fire department or police department. Holt was devastated by the tornado that hit in 2011. Um, Holt Community Partnership, Holt in Action, these are groups who are working out in Holt who are very interested in partnering with the university. And at first these groups were interested in making sure the basic needs of the residents of Holt were met, you know, shelter and food and clothing. Over time, after the more immediate needs of the community were addressed, then we became interested in health issues that impact the residents of Holt and some of those factors that are causing these health problems in Holt. We're using a participatory approach, and in doing this, we're finding out from the community what the needs are. So uh, we have been meeting regularly since August, and my students have been helping with some team building activities, and we have created a survey to do our health needs assessment. At first, we thought we were going to be addressing the basic health needs like diabetes, heart disease. Um, as we're going through this process, we're learning that there are uh, a lot of other issues that are affecting health or potentially affecting health out in hold. So it might not be as simple as getting people to eat more fresh fruits and vegetables if there's a problem with the soil being contaminated and we can't grow our own gardens in Holt, then how do we address that? And so this has become a, a bigger project than what we first imagined it would be. And we're, we're trying to just revitalize the community from where it bring it back up to what it used to be. It used to be a, a good middle class community years ago with a good economic base and it's kind of drifted downhill through the years and I think it's a good unique opportunity to uh, try to engage the people in the community and try to build the community back up. If we can get people to understand what it is that we're trying to accomplish because I am living inside of this community, I only want to make the uh, improvements and make this community better because that's part of my life also. And I think this is a good opportunity to kind of gain both the researchers aspect and kind of also learn like the perspective of the community and I can take those skills and apply it elsewhere. I hope to develop a service learning course that's going to provide an ongoing supply of students and give those students opportunities to um, do health education in the community under the guidance of the Health Lab Advisory Board. After we uh, administer the survey in the next month or two, we'll. Uh, analyze the data, figure out what the biggest health needs are out in Holt, and the group will work together to try to figure out the best way to address these needs. Mm -hmm.